Hey YouTube, it's Nayam Nappy, and I'm back for another Tip Tuesday. This week will be a follow-up from last week's video where we'll be discussing the difference between humectant emollients and occlusives and the role they play in a leave-in and conditioners. Additionally, we'll investigate the ingredients of one of my favorite leave-in creams and what makes these ingredients so great in these products, okay? So let's first get ahead and get started with the humectants. So humectants have several hydrophilic or water loving groups, which attract water from the environment into your hair or your skin. Now humectants are crucial when you are formulating products for dry hair or for tight, coarse and kinky hair that constantly loses moisture and needs to attract that moisture into your hair strand. So some of the common humectants you see in hair products are glycerin, honey or honey quat, sorbitol, panthenol, hyaluronic acid, plant gels such as slippery elm, marshmallow root, and hydrolyzed proteins. Now one of the most common humectants that I feel either people love it or hate it or is glycerin or glycerol. Now glycerol or glycerin is actually a sugar alcohol and it is actually a very, very small molecule. So what happens is that it can attract water very easily, but unfortunately it also loses water very rapidly, which can leave your hair feeling dry over time, which is why some people say that glycerin makes their hair feel dry. Generally, people complain about glycerin leaving their hair dry when they live in dry climates. Generally, people who live in humid climates, such as I do in the East Coast, we do not have a problem with um, glycerin because glycerin, again, it draws moisture from the environment to our hair, and a humid environment can be a great way to add more moisture to your hair. However, let's say you absolutely just hate glycerin. So some alternatives that I recommend are film forming plant gels. So where this is your, your uh, marshmallow root, your slippery elm gel, your okra gel. I've actually have a video on okra and slippery elm, how to make your own gel with those. I also have a video on how to make a DIY sea moss hair gel. So these are great humectants that help draw moisture to your hair. And a lot of people are able to handle those better. So you wanna look for ingredients if you don't like glycerin that are film forming that will still provide and attract that moisture or that water to your hair strand. Additionally, people use hydrolyzed proteins in, um, as humectants as proteins help to lock in the moisture to your hair strands. Or additionally, I recommend using an oil if you're going to be using glycerin or other humectants in your regimen. So this goes right into our next point, you guys, and that's about emollients. So next up is emollients, and emollients are lubricating and film forming. They also provide a hydrophobic or water repelling layer to your hair strand. Now it repels water and means that it locks the water in and prevents it from escaping from your hair, even though we know that a little bit of water will always escape from our hair. So the main function of emollient is to, to nourish, to soften your hair strands. So a, lot of, so a lot of emollients have wonderful properties. You might see emollients in your products as, as standalone products, classified under these, these um, categories, either butters, oils, esters, fatty acids, and lipids, or you might see them classified as in their common names as you know it as jojoba oil, almond oil, olive oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, and forms of ceramides and ceramide oils. So the emollients or the fatty acids that you see in products are actually the emulsifying agents in the product. So you might not see them particularly under that exact name, but you might see them under some of these names. Now fatty acids, um, may be classified under alcohols. Now these are your fatty alcohols. These are the good alcohols that provide moisture, slip, detangling properties to your hair care product. So you might see them as a name as sterile alcohol, cetyl alcohol, cedarol alcohol, linoleic acid, palmitic acid, pentanoic acid. I totally might be mispronouncing that one. But you wanna look for these particular products and those are actually your emulsifiers. Now emulsifiers bind two products that cannot be mixed. So we know oil and water do not fully mix and the emulsifier allows these products to mix, providing a smoothing layer to the products, okay? 
You know, these emulsifiers are really, really key in finding a good product that works for your hair. Looking for lighter emollients that work very well with your humectants to provide a moisturizing layer that helps seal and lock in that moisture for your hair. So we'll go ahead and move on to occlusives because they're very close to emollients. So let's learn. So we're finally down to occlusive. Now occlusives, you guys, are basically your sealants. They, they provide a hydrophobic or water repelling barrier, locking in that moisture to your hair strand, preventing any moisture loss. Now, occlusives can also be emollients, so that can include your butters and your heavier oils that seal and do not penetrate into the hair shaft. So I'm talking about like shea butter, um, mango butter, castor oil, beeswax, olive oil, linolin, or even your waxes or your silicones are also known as occlusives. So occlusives can leave a, a heavier barrier or a thicker barrier or in your hair strand. So when you're looking for a moisturizer that's gonna work for you, you wanna look at the type of hair strands that you have and your hair porosity. If you're curious about hair porosity, um, definitely check out my porosity series up here where I help you to learn your porosity and products that work. And that's also gonna be contingent upon the moisturizer that you need. If you have fine, medium strands, you might need something a little bit lighter. If you have coarser strands, you may allow or like heavier products. And this is where you're gonna um, pay attention to the products that you have and use and how your hair responds to them. So I have fine to medium strands that I can get away with, mostly lighter type of oils that work best, like almond oil, um, my hair does like extra virgin olive oil. And occasionally um, I use shea butter, but I prefer whipped shea butter if I'm using it to seal in the moisture, okay? So you guys, now that you know that you have, that you need a good humectant, you need a emollient, and you also need an occlusive, now we know the three basics that you need in a good um, leave-in or moisturizing cream. So now I'm gonna show you my favorite Ayurvedic moisturizing cream to show you how the humectant, the emollient, and the occlusive agent all work together to make this a bomb, bomb moisturizing cream. Okay, so this week I'm showing you Basque and Bloom's More Moisture Cream. Now I've never done a full product review on them, but blown away by these products because they are amazing and they have herbs in them. And that for me is really key in having a really, really great moisturizer. Herbs and plants provide a hydrator or a hydrating layer to um, products to your hair strand. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you these ingredients up close for you. Okay, just wanna show you the brand. I'll probably just insert the clip. Okay, so the ingredients go, distilled water infused with slippery elm, sea kelp, horsetail, orange peel, marshmallow root, aloe vera juice. So that's all infused in the water. So that's your water phase along with a ton of humectants, okay? Your slippery elm is a humectant that produces a mucilage, all right? Your sea kelp, a mucilage, your marshmallow root, all of those plant gels are great humectants, which means they attract that water to your hair. All natural products, amazing, okay? Next on this list is Bentronia methyl sulfate and cedaryl alcohol, which is your conditioning emulsifier. I like that she states it right next to it, okay? So that's your emulsifier where you learn that that helps bind the, oil, the water and the oils together, providing a nice slippery layer, conditioning layer to your product. Finally, she has aloe vera extract, raw shea butter, kupuwasu butter, avocado oil, coconut oil, castor oil, wheat germ, grape seed, and vitamin E. I'll stop there and then I'll talk about the rest in a second. So these I would consider your emollients along with your occlusive agents, okay? So your emollients, remember, can also be, again, as we stated earlier, your emulsifiers, but they can also be your standalone products. Products that can penetrate, the kupawasu butter can penetrate and can uh, pe can penetrate the, the hair shaft, providing moisture. So can the avocado oil can penetrate. So can the castor oil, the coconut oil, the wheat germ oil, which is also a ceramide, as we learned that ceramides are also great emollients. Now you also have um, sh raw shea butter, grapeseed oil that can also fill in. That can be your occlusive along with your emollients, okay? So wonderful products. This 
product is amazing. Um, finally, she adds um, potassium sorbate, which is just a natural preservative. You have water and oil, you must have a preservative. Otherwise, your product will go bad. And then finally, she just has an essential oil blend for fragrance. And this is a great moisturizer. There's no additional added products that you don't know what is used for. There's no words on here that you can't pronounce. So this is the type of product that's going to draw moisture into your hair and then lock in that moisture, okay? So that's it for this week. If you guys missed my previous video about the difference between hydration and moisture, please check out the video I'll link up top here and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell for next week, you guys, where we'll be making our very own Ayurvedic leave-in um, conditioner that you can use that's very similar to this particular conditioner and also similar to the Ayurveda conditioner that I made in the previous week where it is very hydrating for your hair, has a ton of slip and provides a sealing layer. So that's it for this week. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll see you on all my social media pages if you're following me. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>